a reflection on the Lord's Prayer with contributions from around the world. From Luke's Gospel. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. The Lord's Prayer is probably the world's most famous prayer. These few simple yet profound words are recited around the world in every language and touch the hearts and souls of people in every situation. Why? Perhaps because in a few simple phrases they touch the very core of human spiritual, physical and social need. This is a prayer that transcends all boundaries. As Christians around the world, we may have slightly different doctrines or interpretations of scripture. We may have varying liturgical and cultural traditions and expressions of our faith. But this prayer unites us all, whichever denomination of the Christian faith we belong to. This prayer is said daily and weekly in every service, in every Christian gathering and every private time of prayer. It is the prayer that unites us in joy and in the moments of sorrow. When taking services in homes, for example, even with those with dementia, it's the one prayer that one finds a person who normally speaks gibberish, whose mind is gone, will suddenly say perfectly and with absolute clarity. At the bedside of someone in a coma or dying, I've seen and felt an unconscious person start moving their lips or squeeze my hand as I start to pray the words of the Lord's Prayer. Tradition has it that Jesus taught the disciples this prayer on the Mount of Olives overlooking Jerusalem. There is a cave and a shrine over the place, over the traditional site today, and the walls of the shrine are inscribed with the prayer in numerous languages. It's recorded that Jesus prayed regularly on Mount of Olives with his disciples and the caves on that mountain were a natural protection from the weather. There are only a few places left in the world where a modern version of Aramaic, the language of Jesus, is still spoken. One of those is the Christian village of Malula in Syria, a place of pilgrimage since the 5th century, which in 2013 was occupied by militant Islamists. Its churches and shrines were ransacked and desecrated, their icons destroyed or stolen, and several villagers murdered and several kidnapped and later murdered as well. Since the village was liberated in 2014, the churches have now been restored. The convent of Masakis in, is one of the oldest churches in the world, dating to the 5th century. And here the Lord's Prayer continues to be prayed in Aramaic the language of Jesus, as we hear recorded in that church a few years ago. Lord, teach us to pray. Isn't this cry something to which we can all relate? How do we pray in the midst of so much pain, so much conflict, so much uncertainty, so much division in the world? Jesus encapsulates in a few short phrases the essence of his call and God's will for us all. 
So if, let's take up those phrases. Father. For us, God is not something remote and unknowable. Yes, he is awesome in majesty and infinite in power, but he also loves us as God loves his only son, Jesus Christ. Whatever we face, we can know that love, that love that surrounds us and sustains us in every moment for all eternity. Dr. Sasser is a remarkable Burmese doctor from a remote mountainous rural village in the Chin state in Burma, Myanmar. He became the first doctor in the state and now runs a charity called Health and Hope that has trained over a thousand community health workers in over 500 villages, villages in his state. His clinics have reached over 120,000 people. He is transforming the life of his community, and he does it all because of his faith. Listen for a moment as Dr. Sasser's children pray the Lord's Prayer together in their, in their local language, the Mara language, in Myanmar. <laughs> Immediately after the word Father comes, holy is your name. It's only when we put God and give to him the glory in all things that all else falls into praise. If our starting point is adoration of him and surrender to his will, then this world will surely be transformed if we live by that. Lakang Sumalong works with the peace builders community in the Philippines, seeking justice and peace through indigenous traditions, the healing of communities and sustainable developments. The sacrificial love of Jesus is what inspires all that he does. And you can see it as he prays the Lord's Prayer in his language. Hello, I am Lakan Sumulong from the Philippines. I'm going to recite the Lord's Prayer in Tagalog language. Ama namin, sumasalangit ka. Sambahin ang ngalan mo. Mapasa amin ang kaharian mo. Sundin ang loob mo. Dito sa lupa para nang sa langit. Bigyan mo kami ngayon ng aming kakainin sa araw-araw. At patawarin mo ang aming mga sala para ng pagpapatawad namin sa mga nagkakasala sa amin. At huwag mo po kaming ipahintulod sa tukso. At iadya mo kami sa lahat ng masama. Sapagkat iyo ang kaharian at kapangyarihan at ang kadakilaan Magpakailanman. Amen. Bringing in that kingdom comes in many ways, through education, through health care, through pastoral ministry, through prayer. For some of it is through community as well. Father Dave Smith is a parish priest in Australia. For years he taught a disadvantaged young people discipline and self-worth through the skills of boxing. He was a champion lightweight boxer. He has also had a long-standing ministry of advocacy for the Middle East, making many visits to Palestine and Syria and standing up for peace and reconciliation in the region. Recently, he started a community of prayer in the bush in Australia. And he joins us now to pray with us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of the trial, deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
give us each day our daily bread. Our daily provisions are gifted to us by God. Everything that we need is there on the planet if we manage it well and if we are wise stewards of its resources. But note the words, give us each day our daily bread, not give me each day my daily bread. The resources are there for us all. Not for each one individually. We are called to care for each other. In traditional societies, there is often a much greater sense of community than the so-called developed world. Fitter Simon comes from the northwest of Uganda, one of the poorer areas of the country, which has seen thousands of refugees come in from conflicts on two sides in Sudan and in Congo. The church there is doing much to provide for the needs of all people. Simon teaches at the Uganda Christian University and is currently undertaking postdoctoral or postgraduate research in South Korea. He shares the words of the Lord's Prayer in his own native language of Lubrati. Ata amani of worry. Room minima of in Tizaro. Suru minima emu. E yominima e inyakua e kile worle. Mi fe e turosi nyaka andori amadri. Mi ku mari amani. Amani ba amotli nyapi di mamari kulerle. Mi ji ama obeta ma alia ku. Ipa ama onzi alia. Te supie o popie. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Forgiveness is at the heart of the Christian message. It's humbling to know that in Christ, no matter how unworthy we are, we are loved and forgiven by God. But if he loves us so much, we too are called to love and forgive each other. It's one of the most difficult tasks of the disciples and not an easy process. In the politics of recent decades, there is much that we in the West need to be forgiven for, and also much in the society that we helped to that we have helped to create that we need to learn to forgive, but also to transform. And true forgiveness, turning from sin, is truly transformative. Reverend Joss Strengholt is a Dutch Anglican priest who ministers in Holland, but who has also spent years ministering in Egypt, especially amongst Sudanese refugees in Cairo. In such contexts, contexts one understands both the power but also the cost of learning to forgive and transform suffering so that we can live in peace. Let us pray. Onze Vader die in de hemelen zijt, uw naam worden geheiligd, uw koninkrijk komen, uw wil geschieden, gelijk in de hemel als ook op de aarde. Geef ons heden ons dagelijks brood en vergeef ons onze schulden, gelijk wij vergeven onze schuldenaren. En leid ons niet in verzoeking, maar verlos ons van de boze, want van u is het koninkrijk en de kracht en de heerlijkheid tot in eeuwigheid. Amen. And do not bring us to the time of trial. It is in our times of trial that we find our faith most tested. And yet so often it is in those times of trial that God is most persistent, most present, even when we feel perhaps that he's, we feel he's most absent. So often in the furnace of persecution or violence, the power of love and Christian faith shines forth most profoundly. We hope not to come to those times, but when we do, know that the power and the love of God is not only present, but also has the ability to transform and always bring new life and new hope. Syria has been through one of the most violent and brutal wars in recent history, and Aleppo is a city that experienced some of the worst of it. 
I visited Aleppo several times in the midst of the conflict and was profoundly impacted by what I witnessed, but also inspired by the courage and perseverance of the people in the city, both Christian and Muslim. Amongst those are the Armenian Christian community. Like everyone else, they, they were targeted by the militant groups and their churches destroyed, but they have come out of it and are now rebuilding. Our last contribution is from an Armenian, young Armenian Christian in Aleppo, who shares with us from her city in Armenian and Arabic. Hello. Greetings from Aleppo, Syria. My name is Angela Daghlian. I'm a graduate of the Faculty of Medicine of Aleppo University. I'm also a leader in youth and junior groups of the Armenian Evangelical Bethel Church. I'm filming this from the destructed Armenian Evangelical Bethel Church, which was targeted by the militant groups during the war. This church is still in the process of restoration. Dear ones, please join me as I will pray the Lord's Prayer in my mother tongue, Armenian and Arabic. Of Hermet, Borier Kinkness, Kuanunet Surpella, Kutakaburtunet Ka, Ugamukulla, Ichpesier Kinke, Luimbesalier Gribera. Mera menor bahatse, aisor al mesidur. Yev mesinere mer bartkere, inch pes menkal genereng mer bartagan nerun. Umes portsutian midanir, havacharen mesasate. Kansi kukete, takavorutuna, yev zorutuna, yev parke. Havitianes havidenits. Amen. Abana lazi fis samawat, liya takadas ismuka, liya ati malakutuka. لتكن مشيئتك كما في السماء كذلك على الأرض أعطنا خبزنا كفاف يومنا وإغفر لنا زنوبنا وخطيانا كما نحن نغفر لمن أخطأ وأساء إلينا ولا تدخلنا في التجارب لكن نجنا من الشرير آمين When you pray the Lord's Prayer remember that you are doing so in the company of one of the world one third of the world's population you are reciting words of Jesus himself, words that represent the very core of his call and invitation. May this prayer and everything that it means and the unity that it brings with all our Christians and brothers and sisters in every corner of the world inspire deeper faith, renewed confidence and strengthen discipleship. God bless you all. Amen.